Hello, and welcome to the Center for the so Study of Social Policies Accelerating Change Award webinar. Before we get started, just a few housekeeping reminders. Currently, all of our participants are on listening only mode. However, if you have questions about either the award or the technology, please use your chat feature in your GoToWebinar toolbar. Again, welcome. My name is Tashara Halyard, and I lead the Alliance for Racial Equity in Child Welfare here at CSSP. The Alliance provides national leadership in support of improved outcomes for children and families of color involved in the nation's child welfare system. Today I'm joined by Amelia Essenstad, who's also a CSSP staff person. She will be managing the webinar and supporting the award. So a bit more about CSSP. We are a national organization headquartered in Washington, D.C. We work with state and federal policymakers, public administrators, community partners, and many others across the country. Our mission is to create new ideas and to promote strategies that produce equal opportunities and better futures for all children and families, especially those who are most often left behind. The Accelerating Change Award is being managed by CSSP's Alliance for Racial Equity and Child Welfare. First, some background on the award. Here's what we know. Too many young women and girls of color are hindered by the negative effects of discrimination, personal and community violence, as well as involvement in intervening public systems. Last year, in 2015, CSSP joined a forum hosted by the White House Council on women and girls to explore these negative effects, as well as opportunities for young women and girls of color to thrive. Stemming from our dialogue with the White House Council on Women and Girls, we launched our Accelerating Change Award to honor and uplift the valuable contributions of organizations, programs, initiatives, and agencies serving young women and girls of color involved with intervening public systems. And that's a mouthful, so you'll hear me often truncate those groups into initiatives. The award is supported by the Annie E. Casey Foundation, and we're thankful for their support. So why women and girls of color? First, we are committed to improving the outcomes of this group, very simply. Our Dismantling the Pipeline paper lays out the struggles faced by the demographic, including a unique sexual abuse to prison pipeline. While data that is disaggregated by race and gender are unfortunately scant, we do know that far too many girls are growing up in systems meant to serve them only for short terms as an intervention. As a result, this can place them on a trajectory towards deeper system involvement, especially adult systems like the criminal justice system. It can lead to unplanned pregnancies, homelessness, and also sexual exploitation. More details about the award. First, awardees will receive national recognition. And while this is not a grant-making opportunity, awardees will receive a small honorarium to support their work and the opportunity to join a network of similar high-performing initiatives serving the same demographic. CSSP hopes through this award to influence the field by increasing awareness and understanding of innovative strategies that support young women and girls of color to, th to thrive. And last, we hope to create connections by connecting like-minded organizations, programs, initiatives, and agencies to share knowledge and also promising practices. CSSP will select initiatives that meet the following criteria. And all of this information is also on our website and in the PDF that gives more detail about the award. Again, this is located on our website. We plan to uplift initiatives that serve or advocate on behalf of young women and girls of color aged 9 to 21 years old. Those initiatives that are focused on young women and girls of color that are involved with intervening systems. And I've said that a lot. So to give an example of those systems, we mean child welfare, juvenile justice, homeless and runaway services, as well as mental health systems. Initiatives that are, in, are, that are innovative, excuse me, 
serving and or advocating for young women and girls of color in new and effective ways, ones that are using a strength-based approach, supporting girls and young women of color's healthy development and their ability to thrive, also ones that have a strong evidence of a youth voice, that their capacity and interest in authentically engaging youth and decision-making is evident, and last but not least, initiatives that have clear results and outcomes for you, such as the ability to collect, analyze, and use data to track youth development and outcomes over time. This does not mean that the initiative has to have had large randomized controlled studies, but it does mean that it must have some evidence of clear results of improved outcomes for the population. Information about deadlines. You might be happy to know that the deadline has been extended from February 19th to March 11th. At March 11th, we will have received by website or email attachment all applications. We hope to host interviews between March 23rd and March 30th, and applicants will be notified of their selection by April 6th with a national announcement uh, forthcoming shortly thereafter. That's all for the overview of the award and additional details. However, we would love to hear from you all. I will pause there and give us a chance to field any questions that you may have in the chat box. One question we've received is, are there any preferences in the way that initiatives apply? No, we do not have any preferences. It can be either by email, and the email should be sent with the attachments and questions to amelia.esenstad at cssp.org. Her email address and name is listed there on the final screen. Or it can be done by web. We have a portal on our website which can easily be, easily be navigated to through our homepage on our website or by clicking the link that's here in the webinar. It's cssp.org slash accelerating dash change dash award. Either way, we are happy to accept applications. Um, one thing that we've noticed is that people have had questions about the page limit for the applications. Um, we asked for a bio and also for a theory of change and or a logic model. Those two things do not count against the five to seven page limit for the entirety of the award, the questions that we ask. I'll pause again for just a second to see if we have any other questions before we wrap up. And another question just came in. It says, for organizations slash programs that serve this population in the context of a larger program, i.e., along with other proven risk, high risk and or at risk youth of all genders and racial backgrounds, is that of interest? Um, and that came from Jane Baker. Jane, I'm not quite sure I understand your question, but it sounds like you're asking if, if you are eligible to apply if your program serves more than just young women and girls of color? Um, if so, the answer to that is yes. We just ask that you give us information about that initiative that specifically serves the group that the award is being given for. And we have another question that just came in. It says, if a program has begun organizing a group of important public and private stakeholders to address problems with girls of color, but has not implemented a full program, would it be viable to show our proposed program? In other words, our agency has done a lot of important work with this population, but we are interested in building momentum for a project we'd like to implement. Can we have that plan highlighted through this award? Yes, the answer to that is yes. Um, we welcome applicants from the range of long-term programs to those who may be just getting started. I'll give another minute in case we have any other questions.
And thank you again to everyone who is tuned in. I hope the extended deadline helps you all to complete your application. If there are no more questions coming in by chat, I do encourage you all to reach out to us by email. Again, Amelia can field all questions, and her email address is listed there. We can also be reached by phone here in Washington, D.C. Oh, I'm sorry, I have one more question. Please feel free to ask about arts organizations and eligibility. Our only requirement, Toya, I think I understand what you're alluding to is, are arts organizations eligible to apply? Our only requirement is that if you are an arts organization, that you serve young women or girls of color, young women and girls of color, excuse me, who are involved in intervening public systems. So it can be an arts-based program, but it must be targeted towards that population who are involved in, as I mentioned before, child welfare, juvenile justice, et cetera. I hope that gets to your question. OK, perfect. Thanks for letting us know. We have two more questions that just came in. One is, how do we prove that our girls are, are in intervening systems? We trust that you all are aware of um, your population, your demographic. If you have young women and girls who are involved in your program, if you have taken that information by survey or otherwise, we will trust that your um, assessment is correct. Oh, I understand. So you're asking if you work with the girls independently. Um, the recommendation I would offer is you may want to ask if you don't think the question is too intrusive, um, because serving girls who are in intervening systems is a key part of the award. One last call for questions. Well, again, we thank you all for dialing in. Again, additional information can be found on our website. It's listed there on the screen. We look forward to your applications, and please have a good afternoon.